Good morning, everyone. Um, it's, a, it's a kind of lovely but cloudy day out um, with the sun starting to shine through a little bit in places. And <clears throat> I think it's a perfect day for Juneteenth. Um, that's what we're gathered here for this morning in this time and space is to um, to reflect and pray, to think a little bit about the complications of this day, the competing ideologies and feelings and emotions that we that many have today. Um, one where we want to celebrate freedom. That's what today is. It is a celebration of freedom, of emancipation of a people who should never have been slaves in the first place. And we celebrate today that it took too long, but also that action was taken, that voice was given, that freedom was finally bestowed. It's hard, I think, because today forces many of us to come face to face with hard truths that we may not always want to wrestle with. The fact that our country, our ancestors participated in something so horrendous as treating fellow humans like animals, like less than animals. We don't want to admit that. We don't want to think on it. We don't want to talk about it. And we certainly don't want a day put aside to remember it. And yet, one of the things that our brothers and sisters who celebrate the Jewish faith offer in their scripture, in our scripture, is constant reminders, not only of what went right, but also what went wrong and how we find God in all of those moments. The Jewish faith is constantly calling into mind and memory the successes and failures of their people. They do this to remember every step of this journey that they have been on as a community and with God. One of the things I love most about our Jewish scriptures is that. I love to read those histories, wrestle with the hmm, frustration that it brings because it makes me deal with things that I may otherwise not want to. And so now we have a holiday set aside to both celebrate and lament to say, not enough, and yet something. To say, there is more work to be done, and still we can celebrate what has been done so far. Where we can say, we were wrong, and we need to remember that we were wrong. And we can pray that God will be with us through making it right again. There are two scriptures uh, that I came across. There's many scriptures that we can that we can use today. Nothing, um, not one right, perfect one, but two in particular. Um, so the first is in Amos, Amos chapter five, verses eighteen through twenty-four. So I'll read that for you now. Alas, for you who desire the day of the Lord, why do you want the day of the Lord? It is darkness, not light as if someone fled from a lion and was met by a bear, or went into the house and rested a hand against the wall and was bitten by a snake. Is not the day of the Lord darkness, not light, and gloom with no brightness in it? I hate, I despise your festivals, and I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer me your burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. And the offerings of well-being of your fatted animals I will not look upon. Take away from me the noise of your songs. I will not listen to the melody of your harps. But let justice roll down like waters, 
and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. So for all of the reasons that I just went over, I for the same ones that I, I was thinking, oh, maybe I don't want to read this with all of you today, because um, that's hard to hear. Amos is often not fun to <laughs> listen to or to sit with. And also, again, sometimes it's important to do it. So here, what's happening is Amos is telling the people, look, you are wanting the day of the Lord, but you don't know what that's going to actually mean for you because God's not so happy with how you've been living. You are offering sacrifices. You're giving up your fatted animals. You're offering your grains. You're burning incense. And God cares about none of it. God cares about justice and about mercy. And you all are not living your lives in a way that is offering justice and mercy. Amos likes to draw attention to all of these things, to the ways in which his people are falling short and remind them that all of these celebrations they want to have really aren't theirs to have in the first place because they're not doing what God wants them to do. So we have that and we know, we know that we do the same thing. We know that we always will enter into moments where we mess up, where we look at one another and do not see the face of God in the person in front of us. We will all do it. We will all sometime in our lives offer burnt sacrifices, offer things that that God doesn't want from us and ignore what God is truly asking us to do, which is loving one another, bringing about that justice and mercy for the people who need it most. And we will fail. And still we have hope. We have our gospel reading, which is in Luke today, Luke chapter four. Verses 14, start at verse 14. Then Jesus, filled with the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee, and a report about him spread through all the surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him, then he began to say to them, Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. The Gospel of the Lord. So we go from Amos reminding us, reminding his people that they are not giving God what God is demanding, that they are not treating one another with justice and mercy. And here we have Jesus. We have our hero, our God incarnate, standing before his people and before us, saying words very similar to Amos and promising that he is here to fulfill it, that the scripture, this justice and mercy, this, this promise of release of captives and letting the oppressed go free has happened within him. And that is what we enter into when we proclaim that we believe in Christ, the Son of God, that we follow a God who has sent his Holy Spirit to be upon us, to be within us and around us. We are claiming Jesus as our own. And we are claiming this Jesus 
who has come to fulfill this scripture, to release the oppressed. And we participate in that releasing. We participate in that justice and mercy work. Do justice, love mercy. Because it is who we were made to be. And we might fall short. We may not get it right all the time. We may have a lot of work to do. But today on Juneteenth, we can both acknowledge the Amos within us and embrace the Christ within us simultaneously. The Christ within us that promises we will fulfill this scripture. We will participate in bringing about justice and mercy and letting the oppressed go free and breaking every chain and being sure that everyone around us is seen as a person who has value, who is loved and treasured just as they are. That all have worth and that throughout our history, perhaps, some have not had their worth recognized. And it's those people who we give a little extra to today. It's an acknowledgement that throughout time, we have messed up, and we have to work a little bit harder to make it right now. But it doesn't take anything away from me to give a little bit more love and care and honor to someone else. If anything, it adds to my value in the eyes of God because that's what Amos promises. That's what Jesus fulfills. So today, do it. Even if you don't know if you want to. Even if you're not sure what you think or what you believe. Take a step towards justice and mercy. Towards letting those rivers roll down. Towards letting the Christ within you step out to embrace this scripture from Isaiah that brings good news to the poor and lets the oppressed go free. Let that part of you break out today. That's my prayer. And now, I send you forth the lovely blessing. Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil or evil. Support the weak, comfort the afflicted, be patient with all, and make no peace with oppression. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit and the blessing of God Almighty. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you and all those whom you love and for whom you fight for justice now and always. Amen.